Hey everyone, Mitch coming in with the Grand Score Studio. Welcome to the show. So, spoiler season moves on, and we've got some more exciting spoilers, and one of that I need your help on because there has got to be an easy way to break reluctant roll model. Yeah, that, that's the name of a card now. Which, I mean, it's it's interesting, right? They're doing like the, the movie tropes, and I understand that. It's just kind of weird to be like, I play reluctant roll model, instead of being like, I don't even know. I don't know what else you would call this. Or like, you know, like, scared dude with a, a... I don't even know what kind of a weapon that is. Okay, anyways. 2-2 two, two human survivor for two mana and white survival. At the beginning of your second main phase, if it's tapped, put a flying lifelink or plus one counter on it. That's quite nice. And whenever a reluctant role model or another creature control dies, if it had counters on it, put those counters on up to one target creature. Now... That is exactly what I'm going to be talking about when it comes to breaking this card, potentially. The first part is nice, and, and obviously in a counter strategy, that could really help you out. So yeah, I mean, this being able to get its own counters on it. But also, the big part, obviously, on this is, hey, um, yeah, distributing counters. It's kind of like a mini Ozolith in a way-ish, but again, like, kind of could be broken in a different way. The Ozolith has some combos, but those are kind of convoluted. That being said, like, this one has to have something, right? Right? There's got to be something. I mean, I guess, like, my base combo that just is in my head right now. And let me know if there's, if there's an easier one. There's, like, that, was it Scurry Oak or whatever? It's, like, whatever a counter gets put on it, you make, like, a 1-1 one -one squirrel or something. So if you had that plus a free sacrifice outlet plus uh any kind of a way to get a counter on the squirrel when it comes into play which there's a couple of different ones like nightly is chosen or something like i don't even know what that thing's called anymore anyways there's got to be ways to do it that being said yeah there's got to be very simple ways there's got to be some ways to combo this right Anyways, regardless, it is a pretty powerful card. It could definitely see play in a lot, a lot, a lot of plus one counter builds out there. And I guess other types of counters too. But yeah, mostly plus one counters because that's uh, a very popular and very well supported theme. Moving on, we've got Piggy Bank. Um, as a pig based channel, um, this is terrifying. Yeah, this is not what uh, us Piggy Banks uh, like to represent ourselves as, but. Uh, Apparently, this is this is it. A 3-2 boar toy. Wizards, since you have like 18 million different distinctions for other things, but you can't, you know, have pig or boar, so your piggy bank is a boar bank. Okay. Anyways, for two mana in red, when it dies, create a treasure token. Um, I mean, okay, if you have like a death trigger deck that maybe you can really take advantage of those, sure. Or like a treasure dot deck sure but there's probably better options for each of those even though you know it's a three two four two mana with all upside again in commander that's just usually not like enough to get you there that being said there are other creatures that are decent low to the ground that can make treasures as well so this one could see play in those types of decks moving on we got lion heart glimmer a two five cat glimmer enchantment creature for five mana and white Ward 2, because Wizard sows ward on things. Whenever you attack creatures, you control a plus one until have turn. This one's, again, probably more of a limited card, I would say. Yeah, maybe, like, it's a nice, like, little, like, pump effect on attack. It is, you know, just whenever you attack. doesn't have to be this creature attacking. It's more of a limited card for the most part. Maybe an Enchantress deck that likes Anthem-ish effects could use it, maybe. Moving on! Bear Trap. Artifact for one flash. Pay three tap, sacrifice it, deals what three damage to any, uh, to target creature, I should say. Yeah, probably more of a limited card as well, unless you really care about, uh, an artifact that has flash that costs one. I'm sure there's some weird shenanigans you can do with that, but, uh, yeah, mostly just a very specific limited card. Moving on, Growing Dread, Enchantment for two mana in Simic with flash. When this enters, Manifest Dread. Whenever you turn a permanent face up, put a counter on it. Eddie, you've got yet another card for your face down tribal deck. Enjoy! Yeah, if you've got face down dot deck or, you know, like a morph deck or a 
you know, Manifest deck or all of the different iterations of having a face down creature. Yeah, you're probably going to want to consider this because it just does give you a face down creature. So that's nice. But then also being able to flip things face up. That's nice. And I guess uh, other kind of weird considerations would be decks that um, have massive things in them, but also have blink spells too, I guess, because you could, you know, hit something off the top of your library and then flip it over. Cool. Uh, but that's very specific. Anyways, let's go on to the next one with Overgrown Zell at A04 Uptrude for two mana in green. Tap at one mana of any color, and then tap to two mana of any one color only to turn permanent face up. Sure, again, if you've got like face down dot deck, cool. Use this. Great. Flip things over. Cool. Uh, if you don't, um, there's better, uh, you know, two mana uh, tappers out there for mana. Mana dorks. There you go. Moving on! Bashful Beastie. Oh, I'm so shy. 5-4 Beast for 5 mana in green with dies Manifest Red. Yeah, I mean, if you've got, again, a deck that, you know, really cares about death triggers a lot, in the graveyard maybe, cool. If not, no, probably not. Anyways, I mean, and that's kind of funny, again, like, looking back on the history of Magic, like, you've got a 5-4 for 5 mana, and when it dies, you get a 2-2. Two -two. Cool. I mean, that probably would see play way back when, but not anymore! Next up. Hand that feeds. That is terrifying. Get it? You, you bite the hand that feeds, but this has a mouth. A 2-2 two -two mutant for two mana in red delirium. Whenever it attacks, well, there are four more card types among cards to your graveyard, plus two plus zero gains. Medicine on turn. Very limited card. Moving on. Give into violence. Please don't. Instant for two mana in black. Tar creature gets plus two plus two gains. Life link until on of turn. Probably more of a limited card, unless you really care about, you know, giving maybe your commander lifelink. If there's some kind of an interaction with that, where a little bit of pump and some lifelink would be helpful, great. If not, there are, I mean, there are more efficient ways to do that, too. Next up, Twist Reality, instant for three mana in blue. Choose one, counter target spell, manifest dread. Yet another card where I just, you know, point people toward them. They're like, I'm still playing cancel. And it's like, why? They're, they're, no. Okay, I mean, if you're playing like, you know, all counter spells dot deck, sure. But no. And it's not even a budget thing. Like, there are, like, spells like this, which is probably going to be cheaper than cancel. That, that like, Anyways, play this instead of cancel, okay? But still, like, when it comes to a counter spell, usually you want it to cost one less, uh, you know, two mana, unless, even if it's, like, a negate, right, versus this. If you really care about that manifest red, then yes, okay? You really have to care about that, though, a lot. You're not just going to be like, wow, I get, like, uh, two options instead of just one, add an extra, extra mana. If you like the manifest red, great. If you have, like, wanting to, you know, get things in your graveyard, maybe, wanting to make a 2-2, ways to, you know, flip those things over, maybe with, again, a blink effect or whatnot, cool. Yeah, a blink deck could consider this one because blinking something massive could just flip it right over for you, so do keep that in mind. But, yeah, again... Don't just use cancel. Use this instead. Next up, Calamity Prowler. 825 Enchantment Creature for 4 mana in blue. Whenever it attacks, a target type creature can't be blocked this turn. Um, Yeah, this is pretty specific, I guess. It's uh, There are better ways to get other creatures through. It is nice that it's like making the creature unblockable, but this is also going into danger. Yeah, probably more of a limited card. Next up, Split Skin Doll. Creepy. 2-1. Artifact Creature Toy for 2 mana in white. When it enters, draw a card. Then discard a card unless you control another creature power 2 or less. Uh, again, we are getting like more of these like Elvish Visionary type cards at 2 mana. Like, hey, ETB, draw a card. This one is interesting because it's like, okay, it is either a you know looting effect, essentially. Draw a discard, which is still nice. Again, card selection. That is nice. And that is worthwhile. Uh, but, you know, if you have another creature with power two or less, which if you've got, you know, a tokens deck, a go wide strategy, just a low power deck. Cool. Great. Awesome. You just get to keep that card. I mean, you can keep the card anyways, but not have to discard a card instead. And yeah, artifact decks consider this one as well. Next up, fear of surveillance. A 2-2 two -two enchant creature nightmare for two mana and white vigilance. Where it's attacks, uh, surveil one. Yeah, not really. It's probably more of a limited card again, unless you really care about surveil and maybe have ways to make this survive combat, because even though you're like, okay, cool, it's got vigilance, I'll swing. Oh, wait, all my opponents have a blocker that could very easily take this out. Moving on! 
the mind render so now i already did this one on a previous episode today but that was before i really had enough coffee to realize that this was actually a legendary creature if you haven't seen the episode uh, from earlier today make sure you check that out i do go through this in detail essentially but i did promise that at some point which is now i'm gonna go through cards that work really well with this in case you want to build a commander deck around it so really quick 10-1 legendary creature nightmare for three mana blue can't be blocked if a source you control deal damage to an opponent Prevent that damage, and each opponent mills that many cards. Basically, turns your damage into mill for all opponents, not just one. Let's talk about some cards that work really well with this. If you want to build around this commander, I can imagine many of you do. It's a very exciting mill commander that goes in a different direction. It's really cool. Let's do it. First up, yeah, Fire Shrieker. Let's do that. Again, this has 10 power. It is unblockable. Why not let it hit for 20? Again, in most circumstances, you'd be like, well, I just need one more point of damage, and then all of a sudden, commander damage gone. Yeah, it's not going to happen with this commander. I mean, there's probably a way to, like, make it so that its abilities go away, but then it's not unblockable anymore, too. But, yeah, I mean, you can you can find a way, I'm sure. Regardless, uh, mill people. It's fun, right? Come on. Okay, so anyways, instead of milling 10 cards per opponent, which, again, is 30, which is already a lot, you're milling now 60 cards in total for just swinging with your three-mana commander and getting through. 20 for each opponent that is probably going to be about you know four swings and then you'd get there or i mean you can speed things up even faster with uh inquisitor's flail it's an equipment for two if a equipped creature would deal combat damage deals double that damage instead if another creature would deal combat damage to equipped creature deals double that damage to equipped creature instead this does have a downside but not really with this commander because this commander well i mean hopefully you're not blocking with any of your art's gonna die anyways but hey um it's unblockable meaning that your opponent's creatures aren't gonna be able to deal combat damage to it so all of a sudden you put this on your commander and it's hitting twice as hard and it also interacts incredibly well with double strike because you're going to be hitting for 20 and then 20 again yeah that is 40 damage that is prevented that is 40 milled cards per player that is 120 milled cards in total mill players eat your heart out and of course there's ways to make that even crazier so we'll get to some of those i mean one right now actually bring sanity or a cursed enchant player. Beginning of each end step, enchant player mills X cards for X the number of cards upon their grave for any of this turn. Yeah, basically, again, with that one player that you, um, you know, uh, put this on, they're uh, unfortunately going to mill a lot faster than the other players. Unfortunately for them, I should say. So, yeah, mill them quite quickly. Again, instead of milling just normally 10 per each for them, they'd have milled 20. In that last scenario where I was like, yeah, double strike and double damage. Cool, that's 40. Then that's 80 for them. And they're probably gone. Speaking of milling a ton, yeah, of course, you want to use things like cut your losses casually, too. You can sacrifice something if you want to. Probably not your commander, but you can if you need to. Target player mills half their library rounded down. That can really set you up to take players out super quickly with your commander. Fleet Swallower. This one also is an attack trigger for you. Attacks. Target player puts the top half of the library rounded up in their graveyard. So yeah, mill for a ton. And then this one as well. Basically the exact same thing, but you can also unearth it as well. Terizian Mind Breaker. Yeah, and unearthing this can be quite fun for you. I mean, if you milled yourself at some point to get things in the graveyard, maybe. Who knows? Anyways, next up. Some different directions that you can take this. Dragon Throne of Tarkir. Sure. I mean, this actually can be a way where you are taking advantage of your commander's mass amount of power. Again, three mana for a 10 power creature is pretty unheard of unless it has like a massive giant downside. But even like Eater of Days, I think is a nine four and that thing costs four mana still. I mean, you lose two turns. This one has no downside to it. It just like, I mean, I guess the downside is if you wanted to win through combat damage, you can't. Regardless, this one can really help you speed things up. Equip creature as defender and pay to tap. Other creatures you control gain trampling at plus X plus X to turn X is creature's power. Yeah, if you've got other creatures in play, oh my goodness, your opponents, well, are going to be milling a ton because all of a sudden, again, let's just say you've got like, I don't even know, you got like Talrin in play, you've got some Drakes in play, you've got like six creatures in play. Cool. You just pump all of them plus 10 plus 10 and give them trample and you're swinging through. All of a sudden you are swinging at someone for again, what I say, like Talrin plus six, that's like 70, like 70 to 80 power in total and milling everyone out. Yeah, you can do that. Lots of fun to be had. And speaking of an army though, Undead Alchemist. Yeah, definitely consider this one. This is actually the very first card that I thought of when I thought of when I saw this commander. Uh, if a zombie you control deal combination to a player instead that player puts that many cards to the top of their library in their graveyard yeah so this one again if you are you know 
Hitting with zombies, you mill instead of dealing damage. Kind of like what this commander does. I'm sure this was an inspiration for the commander in a way. Whenever a creature card is put in opponent's grave from their library, exile that card and put a 2-2 black zombie creature token on the battlefield. Uh, yes, please. So, basically, again, with your commander, you're going to be milling your opponents a ton and other things as well. And all of a sudden, when those creatures hit the graveyard, you are going to be making a massive zombie army that, again, instead of dealing combat damage, is going to be milling your opponents and uh i actually rules layer is out there oh uh, yeah let me know how like those interactions work because it's like i guess they would still stack but i mean either way it would work right You'd just be milling anyway so you're be milling your opponents a ton next up in a weird way um you could actually do some pretty funny things with this commander or you could do like a donate deck with it in a way spawn broker a 1-1 human wizard for a three mana in blue comes into play you may exchange control of target creature control and target creature with power less than or equal to that creature's power the opponent controls so this could actually be an interesting like annoying condition for the deck where you are sure trying to win through mill but maybe that's not working for you, okay? And then at a certain point, you're getting like close to getting taken out by a player. Maybe the other opponents are as well. And this one player is like a huge threat. And then you're like, oh, okay, cool. Um, I play my spawn broker or any other, you know, swap effect essentially. And uh, I give you my 10 power creature and you give me your best creature, which I guarantee pretty much all creatures that you're going to be playing against for the most part in games usually have less than 10 power, the ones that you want to steal. So you steal it and you give them your 10 power creature that again is unblockable. So opponents can't be like, let's make a deal and I'll block it. I mean, they could swing at it anyways, but they also now, instead of dealing combat damage are going to just mill. So that helps you mill the other players that are doing that and it protects you because you haven't been milled at all so far. So yeah, you can do some weird things with this one as well. And uh, yeah, maybe swap things back when you need to. Regardless, other things are, well, I mean, cards like Spell Rupture that you might want to consider. Counter target spell sets controller pace X for X the greatest power among creatures you control. This is a two mana instant. Yeah, it's basically like, like gate, you know, essentially. But you know what? It's basically um, the gate plus because you can counter anything and that opponent's not going to be able to pay 10 mana the vast majority of the time. Pretty much never, essentially. So basically what you're going to be doing, again, is just having, uh, hey, I've got a 10 power creature. I'm going to take advantage of that with cards like this. Next up, when it comes to some pricier cards, cards that are quite a bit outside of my budget, at least less than a dollar is my budget usually, Stubborn Denial. Yeah, this is like the same thing essentially, but like one mana less. It's kind of like negate for that. Counter target non-creature spells control pays one, but if you control a creature with power four or greater, counter that spell instead. So yeah, um, hey, um, you're not going to be able to... Um, yeah, do that because I've got a 10 power creature, much more than four. Manic Cacophony. Again, a great way to mill people. Each opponent mills eight for just two mana. Or if it's kicked, each opponent mills half their library. Round it up. Yeah, that is a ton. Brewback, of course, is an incredible card for this commander. Double up the mill, essentially. So yeah, they mill twice that much instead. That can go quite, quite quickly. Finally, the OG of these effects, I believe, when it comes to like the just mill half. Traumatize. Great card. Target player mills half their library rounded down. So basically, you have plenty of ways to, again, get yourself set up for your commander to help you. And then also ways to help your commander with, you know, fire trigger, those kind of things, double strike, you know, doubling damage. And a lot of really fun, weird things that you can do as well, like Undead Alchemist as well. And with that, this episode is coming to a close. Make sure you comment below with your thoughts on this one. And of course, as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.